Hi, I'm Dan Coffin, owner of SPNC Corp and certified professional agronomist. And I'd like to spend the next few minutes talking to you about a very special element that we have here at SPNC that we have marketed successfully for many years. And that element is called boron. And boron is probably one of our biggest, if not the biggest ROI product for growers uh, that we have sold here in the last uh, 20 years for sure. We have become a hub in a sense, uh, in a sense for this area in, in the boron market uh, because we understand boron, what it does, how it works, how to recommend it and recommend it safely. Also even how to mix it. And you know, occasionally um, the mixes can get really tricky and uh, you have these wonderful boron salts that turn into what we call boat anchors when uh, things don't go right but we have been doing it for a long time. And boron is a critical situation for farmers here in, especially in the Eastern Corn Belt where we get a lot of rainfall. Uh, boron as it occurs as its most available form for plants is what we call an anion, which means it has a charge associated with it that is negative. And if you understand that the charge on the soil is also negative, which is why we call it the CEC, the cation exchange capacity, Cations are positively charged elements. Anions are negatively charged elements. So if you put a, just like in a battery, pluses and minuses, if you put something that's negatively charged in the soil and water comes on top of it, it's going to leach because it has nowhere to stick. It's negatively charged and so is the big battery, if you will. So it leaches. And it's leached and it's leached and it's leached. And because of the fear of boron, because when everybody speaks of boron, the first thing you talk about is boron toxicity. Oh, you put boron out there, it's going to kill your crop. Stay away from boron. <laughs> well, uh, there is some truth to that. If you don't know what you're doing, you probably should stay away. But because we've recommended it for more than 25 years, we understand and have made people big, big money with boron. Boron is not an expensive element to use. Um, you know, it can run anywhere from um, four to six dollars an acre, depending on how much you use uh, uh, for a quart, roughly. Um, and it has gotten uh, out of control price wise. You know, the prices have been fairly reasonable for years. And uh, it's not that it's not reasonable. It's just much more expensive than it used to be because of uh, the difficulties of supply chain economics. But um Boron is extremely critical um, and in the soils around here when we've tested it, 80 to 90 percent of the soils come back immediately grossly deficient in boron. Um, and boron should be applied in the two by two, uh, applied over the surface um, or sprayed on foliar. It can be put on granularly. Um, and typically what we try to help people recognize is you need to stay somewhere in the vicinity of about a pound maximum per year. Uh, when you're putting it into bands or spraying it on the foliar, obviously you're not putting on a full pound. You can, but it's kind of risky. And what we say all the time is there's no need to invest in it all at once. If you don't have to, you can spread it out during the year because if you use a little with the planter or if you use a little bit with a herbicide or you use a little bit with a foliar treatment, you can always make sure that the boron levels stay up in the plant and are successful for you. Um, why is boron important? Well, boron is important for a couple of reasons. One is it controls the total number of ovules, which is the technical term for seeds on your plant. The total number of seeds that determine when that plant is small and it's young um, is going to be driven by boron availability. And if you don't have much boron, um, you're only going to get so many seeds. And so many times guys have told us we seem to have hit plateaus with certain crops. Um, and I asked them, have you ever used any boron? No, we don't use that because it's kind of dangerous. Oh, it's not really dangerous. If you don't understand it, you can be, but it's not. And, um, so we've had people here in the area, um, that have actually put it out side by side in, in, in 80 acre fields where they've put out multiple treatments and in 20 plus acre grids, they've gotten, uh, you know, 30 bushels back at, at a 230 bushel yield level, an additional 30, 25 to 30 bushels of corn. And it happens that way oftentimes even on beans. It's not unheard of to get, uh, you know, 10 or 15 bushels increase in, in bean production as a result of starting to use boron for the first time. So boron is critical for determining the total number of seeds. Secondarily, boron is important in getting sugars to flow from root masses to cells in the upper part of the plant. So when we go to fill our yield potential out, if we don't have enough boron, we're not moving all those sugars that are being stored and built up by the plant and held within the plant effectively up to the seeds where they belong. 
So if we're low on boron initially, we don't make as many seeds. And if we're low on boron late, we don't fill the, the seeds that the cells and the kernels as, as effectively. So we're not getting maximum production. Another thing that's critical about boron that you need to understand is in many reactions that happen inside a plant. So whether they're, you know, physiological reactions, enzymes that have to work or proteins that have to be formed or, or different, different amino acids that, that are controlling systems that don't get made properly. There is no substitute for boron in a plant. Whereas other reactions might have some, like for instance, let's say there was not, not enough iron and maybe manganese could substitute in an action, in a reaction that required iron to work and manganese could fill the bill, but it's less efficient just because manganese isn't iron, but it could do that. For boron, there is no substitute. So if you're out of boron, you're out. And this is one of the reasons why we have helped people been, uh, be successful with it is understanding what kind of things to look for and, and what kind of, uh, of reactions to expect. Why is boron toxic? If you want a, a quick understanding of that, basically when boron causes sugars to flow into the cell, if you think of a cell being you know, a rectangular shape, the edges of the cell are held together by calcium. Calcium forms something called a middle lamella, which is basically a cement bridge to hold cells together. And if calcium is not available or if magnesium is substituting for it, which is a much smaller molecule to make it happen, then instead of having nice rigid cell walls, you have weak ones and they can go this way or this way. And so what happens is if the boron fills up the cells, the cells get very, very, very full and then boop, they pop and all the stuff that was inside the cell ends up outside the cell. And so what happens is you get this graying color initially if there's a boron toxicity problem starting to show, and then all the cells begin to die because they're blowing out their, their cell walls and all their contents are gone, and then they turn white, and then they turn brown, and they're dead. So, you know, knowing this about it, this is one of the reasons why we help people understand the timing, the quantity, and what to put on, and it's not, it's not dangerous, and it can be very, very successful and can be very, very high return on investment for, uh, for the dollars that are generated. So if you have questions about boron um, and you'd like to explore where to go with it, uh, please call in here to the office. Uh, you can dial the main number at 260-478-8080, or you can always find us uh, on the web at uh, SPNC Corp. That's two C's in the center, spncorp.com, and uh, leave us an email and we'll get back to you. But uh, we certainly would like to give you the opportunity to understand how to use this element and make a lot of money.